What's going on, Pelfrey? It's YouTube. Gotcha. What's going on, YouTube? It's Pelfrey. And I kind of want to go over um, kind of a, a little bit of everything on the tank. So the tank has been running my simplified method now for give or take six months. Um, some things have changed, but for the majority of everything, it has not changed. And I'm completely satisfied with, with where everything's going. You know, and I, I will admit this over and over again, I haven't tested the water parameters. I have been doing eight to 10 gallon water changes every week um, with the uh, live Aquarius salt. So, you know, I, I know that that between that and the calc washer, everything is hopefully everything. The ketomorpha has been growing good. So hopefully the nitrates and phosphates are in check now. Pretty sure my nitrate, Red Sea nitrate test kit, the, the all the chemicals and everything are bad. So. I may need to look at picking one of them up just to see where I'm at. And I know I've talked about this quite a bit, but as far as the, far as the, the Coralite algae growth, it has been explosive. Matter of fact, you know, it's starting to grow on the front of the glass and some of the sides and stuff too. So completely, completely thrilled about that. And I know I've mentioned this before, but I've never been completely satisfied with the rock structure. So I have some rocks and I actually have some more out in the garage. These have been in here for a couple of weeks now. And you know, this whole section right here was used, uh, it's all one section. I used the E-Marco cement, and then this uh, right here, and this base is one piece, and then that's just laying on top of that. So I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do yet, but I'm not gonna cement these pieces in there. I know that Abe with Coral Euphoria and uh, Amarazole TV have been taking drill bits, and uh, Amarazole got this idea from Abe with Coral Euphoria, uh, taking drill bits and drilling holes in there so that you can make, um, uh, your own frag plugs out of acrylic rods and a disc so that you can move them around. So I've been toying around with that idea a little bit. Not sure what I'm going to do just yet, but I knew all that those rocks and maybe a couple more are going to go into the tank. Now, as far as the equipment, obviously I've been running the Radeon XR15 Gen 4s for a while. Um, I used to control them off of the Neptune Apex, but I sold the Apex whenever I went to the simplified system. So they're now running off the Ecotech ReefLink. And the ReefLink's been awesome. I read different reviews about it before I got it. More negative than not. And I have had to reboot it once or twice in six months. I very rarely ever change the spectrum. I did for the video's sake. But if I do need to reset the, re the ReefLink, I go up the steps, uh, pl unplug the power, and then I plug it back in, you know, and it boots up and everything works just fine. So as far as the rest of the tank concern, you know, the, the light mount that was made out of it's, it is made out of 8020. Uh, I have the complete part list on my website at pelfrey.net. Whenever I went the simplified method, I got rid of the Ecotech pumps, all the tunes pumps, and I bought a JBO RW15, which was way too big for this tank. I meant to buy the, um, uh, it was an RW15, excuse me, a PP15. I meant to buy the PP8, and I got the, the 15 instead. So I ran on the lowest setting, and it did well for the tank. It was just rather large. And then I was talking to Scurvy with Scurvy's Reef, and I got an Ice Cat 1K gyre from him, so I added that to the tank. Fast forward to where we're at today, I'm back on the Tunesy game. I have dual 6055 Tunes uh, pumps with the controllers. I loved the Tunes 6044, 6040 pumps that I had. I just didn't think that there were enough flow, and these things are, are running a low, low flow uh, pattern right now. So I have definitely have room to crank them up. I use the Tunes large scraper to clean the glass. And from time to time, I have to get in there and scrape some of the hard, hard spots out of the tank with a handheld scraper that I have. As far as the rest of the tank's concerned, there was a comment recently about how of a poor reef keeper I guess I am because I have snail shells all over the sand bed. And I'm 50-50 on it. I get it, my sand bed needs to be cleaned up. You can see the the pumps are moving a little bit of sand in here. This is the, I should re rewind here. This is reef cleaner rock. This is reef cleaner rock. And this pedestal is from Marco rock. This sand is Tropic Eden. Um, it's a couple different variations of sand and I have a whole five gallon bucket full of it. But as far as the snails are concerned, again, I'm 50, 50 on it. 50% of me likes it there because if you go out to the ocean, what do you see in, in the sand? You see shells, Seashells and snail shells, conch snails, whatever. You see all that laid in the sand. So to me, this looks more natural with all this stuff laying here. And you know, truth be told, 
cleanup crews don't last forever. Um, you know, we're constantly renewing our cleanup crew. And I do have some snails in here, you know, there's one here, there's a couple back there, there's a couple back here, and the, the trochus snails are my favorite by far. I do have, there's a bumblebee snail in there. There used to be a Halloween hermit in here. Um, there is an emerald crab in here somewhere. But, you know, the, the snail thing, I don't know, what are your opinions? Clean sand bed with no snail sh uh, shells on it or vice versa. As far as fish, small yellow tang, small yellow wrasse, coral beauty. This is a pintail wrasse. And then I have the um, flame hawk fish and there's a zebra dark fish under here, but it stays underneath this rock work. And I had started out with three of them. I'm down to one now, it is what it is. So all of these fish with the exception of this red wrasse right here um, and the zebra dark fish I got locally. Uh, this piece right here, this fish came from pieces of the ocean. Couple hammers here, got the scoli, some acans here, anchinata back here in the background, a brain coral and a torch coral. And these mushrooms have gotten on my nerves recently. If you follow me on Instagram, you know what I'm talking about because they don't really attach to anything well and all that there's cups and stuff you can put them in. But one recently got sucked into the back of this pump and uh, yeah, it's just kind of more of annoying annoyance than anything at the moment. Now, if we move down to the sump area, I am running the Crystal Reef Red Sea Reefer Triton Sump. Unfortunately, Crystal Reef is no longer in business for one reason or another, I'm not sure. But this is specific for the Red Sea Reefer 250. I am also running their G6 auto top-off container. This is version two of their sump. The first version um, was an inch. The, the refugium was moved over an inch. And I actually had them, they sent me the first sump and I had them make me this sump so that you could fit a bigger skimmer and bigger return pump in here because at the time I had a NIOS 120 and a Core 20 pump, uh, return pump, and they barely fit into the chamber. So obviously now I'm not running the skimmer. So I do dose 200 milliliters of Kalkwasser a day. Both of these uh, BRS jugs, I just take, uh, what is it, two tablespoons or whatever, mix it with uh, one gallon of RODI water. And I've been using the Camor X1 the Bluetooth doser um, for about six months. It's been a great dosing pump. They're about 60 bucks, no complaints. Now I did glue, super glue some bigger tubing here so that it fits here because by default, the Camor comes with a small dosing, dose, dosing lines. Now I'm running the Tunes 3155 auto top off. Amazon grow light, this thing has been on here for like six months. It's been fantastic. Battle corals. Kato Morpha, the Eheim heater, which I desperately need to replace. So I'm also looking for heater suggestions. Mind you, I don't run uh, Apex, uh, Proflux, E-Coral. I don't do any of that. So it needs to have a built-in um, thermometer. I have the Eheim auto feeder dumping into the return chamber. I did this with the Neptune AFS and it's worked flawlessly for me. Octo Aquatics built me this tray. So Triton by default, uh, does not like for you to me mechanically filter the water and I'm not running Triton at the moment, but um, There's no way to mechanically filter the water as it comes down from the tank. So I decided to get a tray built to uh, Kind of clean it up before it goes into the skimmer section. You can see how filthy that is and that's just uh, pinky filter floss Some reef cleaner rock in here in this mesh bag. I have some Ciparax there's the float switch. There's also some more pinky pad there. The float switch and the optical sensor for the Tunes 3155. And a DCP 4000 J-COD return pump, which has been a complete workhorse. It's dead silent and it's it's been a great pump. Now also I do need to get some, I need to cut this down a little bit to get rid of this kink. It's been like that for six months now. And I need to get some black tubing because you can see the coralline algae in there. I know I've been asked recently whatever happened to the leak, and I do plan on getting the new set of O-rings for the Red Sea Reefer tank, but I've noticed the salt creep there once, and I've not noticed it again. So it is what it is. This light is a USB uh, rechargeable light. It's also motion detected. And I also use these magnetic door mounts. So this locks the door with no handles on the outside. Slide a magnet down, and it opens the switch so 
This is the magnet. Slide it down. You can see it disengage. So that's been very, very great on the tank. Now I do use, it's a $30 uh, surge protector. It's a Wi-Fi surge protector. Got my return pump plugged into it. Um, the, what else is plugged into it? I know one of the wave makers is plugged into it. And I think the Camor is plugged into it, but I'm not sure. I'm not hundred percent sure there, but that Wi-Fi surge protector has been amazing. You can set schedules with it. You can turn everything on and off. It is integrated with Alexa, so you can talk to her and tell her to turn things on or off. So if your hands are wet, you just send her the command by talking to her and she'll take care of it for you. So yeah, I know I've had some questions about this cabinet here where I bought it. I actually built it out of half inch furniture grade plywood so that I wouldn't have to sand at all. I use pocket screws and this whole panel comes off of here. So inside of here is a battery backup, the surge protector and the controllers for everything else in the tank, the, the J-COD controller, the tunes controllers, everything else is inside this cabinet. One of the hidden gems in the tank that we don't often see, but this coral has done, it's done well and it's been in there for quite a long time. So I'm completely thrilled with it. I know I've gone over everything pretty fast. Most of you already know what's going on with the tank and how the tank's been living. For those of you that don't, hopefully that catches you up to speed. I don't think that there's anything else to go over at this point. So I'm going to cut it off here. Be sure to check me out on Instagram at Pelfrey's Reef. Check out the website at pelfrey.net. And I'll catch you on the next one.